Like uh, any electrical machine, we're going to explore in section 10-9 uh, losses that are found in the transformer. And we'll see that there are three defined types of losses. And we'll also see that uh, these losses cause uh, two primary things to occur in the transformer. One is uh, increase in heat. And along with that is an, a decrease in efficiency. So let's look at these uh, specifically. This is a, a, an interesting uh, section and defines a couple of things for us. And then we've got a, a, a little example to work through as we uh, explore. This. Okay, so what we can see from this list is uh, transformer losses. And um, you know, any electrical machine is gonna have losses. Uh, we, what we look at is uh, particularly where they occur in the specific machine. So in the transformer, we have uh, what are called I squared R losses, you know, just losses that are due to uh, electrical resistance. And uh, these losses in a transformer occur in the windings. Uh, secondly, there's hysteresis and eddy current uh, in the core. Those have been explored, you know, earlier we talked about the, the effects of those. And there's something else here um, that, that might, uh, be a little different to us. There's, there's these things that are defined as stray losses, and uh, these things occur in the surrounding metal objects. Like, you know, a transformer might have a, a, a supporting tank or some sort of uh, metal supports and so forth and so on. So these um, uh, flux from, you know, primary and secondary leakage can actually, um, you know, penetrate these uh, uh, metal objects and cause heat to occur. Um, magnetic field, eddy currents, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, so that, that is also something that's considered. Now, the losses result uh, appear in the form of heat and two things occur. First off, uh, he shows us that uh, heat will uh, occur and also a drop in efficiency. But with that said, under normal operating conditions, a, a transformer's efficiency is really high. I mean, you look at anything that has an efficiency rating of 90, 99.5%, you know, and, and the larger uh, the electrical machine, and this is really a general statement, the more efficient they tend to be for, for lots of different reasons. Okay, so, so that's sort of, uh, you know, what we're looking at in terms of, you know, setting the the uh, stage here for this uh, section 10-9. So as we're looking at uh, more specifically, he tells us that the heat that's uh, produced in the, uh, by the iron losses, it depends upon the uh, peak value of the mutual flux that we've looked at an equation for that earlier. Um, you know, this, this defined quantity here, uh, here. And um, that, in turn, uh, is going to depend upon whatever voltage we apply to it. On the other hand, the heat that uh, uh, is dissipated in the windings, that's dependent upon the um, current that is carried through the windings. And um, consequently, to keep the transformer temperature uh, within the range that it's uh, designed for, we must uh, set limits to both the voltage and also to the uh, current that is carried. And those were actually uh, uh, mentioned um, in that table that we looked at, uh, I think in the last section, or maybe two sections, or maybe three sections. But anyway, it was a table that uh, actual transformer values, gosh, all the way back to 10.4, uh, that lists something called the nominal voltage, nominal voltage. And when you hear nominal, think of nameplate rated voltage, nominal voltage. And that is given to us as E sub MP. And nominal current is given to us as I. And that is again MP. Okay. So, so those are set by, you know, these, these limits that we need to have, okay? And um, the other thing that he talks about is something called the uh, power rating, the power rating of the transformer. 
And what we'll see with that is it is the nominal voltage, EMP, times the nominal current, IMP. And um, we're not going to write this in watts, though. No. What we're looking at here is what, you know, volt amps, okay? It's, it's all the current, all the voltage used to uh, supply both the active and reactive power. So what we're looking at is transformers are rated in volt amps. Uh, a lot of times you'll see them in kilovolt amps or megavolt amps, but uh, depending upon the size of the transformer. And so, you know, that's our, that's our power rating that's based on this. And then uh, the temperature rise of the transformer is directly related to the apparent power, right? Apparent power, abbreviated S, volt amp, apparent power that flows through it. This means that a 500 kVA uh, transformer, a 500 kVA transformer will get just as hot feeding a 500 kVA R inductive load as it would a 500 kilowatt resistive load, okay? So, so the temperature rise, you know, it's, it's directly related to that. And, and regardless of the makeup of the actual power, be it reactive or, or um, active power, you know, the, the rating is still based on that. So the rated KVA, the frequency and voltage are always shown on the nameplate. And so, you know, we'll go into much more detail on nameplates when we get into motors, but uh, that leads us into this uh, example, uh, 10 four, and I'll just, uh, just keep rolling with this, okay? So 10 four example says that I have a nameplate of a distribution transformer, and it is 250 kVA, it is 60 hertz, and on the primary, uh, it's rated at 4,160 volts. And on the secondary, 480 volts. All right. So what that means, you know, this is the acceptable voltage on the primary side. And then based on the, the, the turns ratio, we're going to output on the secondary side of very common voltage of 480 volts. Okay. He says, calculate the nominal and primary secondary currents. All right, so that's pretty easy to do because I know that the uh, apparent power is the IMP times the EMP. I solve that for IMP for current, and what that's going to give me is the apparent divided by the uh, voltage. And for this particular case, it's rated at 250K. And I'm going to divide that by the voltage that is applied to the primary, right? Which is this. So that is 4160. And of course, um, power, power again, you know, power, we, we know those formulas. And uh, that's going to give me a, a 60 amp rating. That is the current that would flow through the primary side. The secondary side, INS, will be equal to the, again, the apparent power divided by the secondary voltage, which we see is 480 volts. Okay, we do that division and we get 521 amps. Okay, classic uh, transformer example. You know, the total power supplied is the same, but the makeup, the makeup is, um, different based on the current and voltage combination. So if we went out here and we did this and we'll just do it to make sure I'm not telling you a lie, we're gonna multiply these two things out here and we're gonna see what the power comes out to be. So if I take 60 amps and I multiply 4,160, I get uh, 249.6, okay? which is, you know, for our purposes, right, right at that 250K that we were looking at. If I take 480, 
I multiply that by 521, I get exactly 250. So, so what we're seeing, you know, based, you know, taking outside of particulars of rounding and so forth and so on, we're seeing that the power, total power is the same. It's the combination of voltage and current between the secondary and primary that changes. And that's what a, a transformer does, isn't it? That's its, that's its purpose. And then, of course, then, and the isolation part. And then part B of this says, if we apply 2,000 volts to the primary, can we still draw 250 kVA from the transformer? So let me pause and write this down and let's work through this, make sure that we understand this part. So what we see in part B, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. And, and, you know, this is, you know, where, you know, our, our knowledge in this field um, is beneficial uh, because we, you know, we could have a situation like this. So, you know, here's this transformer. It's designed to accept up to 4160 on the primary side but we're only applying 2000 volts to it, right? So, so that's, what, that's what this is uh, showing here. And, and there's nothing wrong with that uh, at all. Uh, we might not be using it to its most efficient, but you know, we could certainly do that, uh, applying a little lower voltage. He tells us that the flux and, um, the flux and iron losses will be less because the, the voltage is less. But you know, when, we, when we look at this thing and, and you know, this, this uh, nameplate on this uh, transformer says it's rated at 250 volt amps, excuse me, K oops, it's rated at 250 kVA, 250 kVA is the rating of this thing, then um, what we have to say is, okay, well, it's 2000 volts, right? And couldn't I multiply that by any number that would get me up to this value? No, you're limited by the nominal current that you calculated in the original problem up here. You're, you're limited by that, you know, because that's the way the machine is designed in terms of the size of the conductors, the insulation and all that sort of thing. So, even though this is well under the rated nominal value of 250 uh, kVA, it's still the maximum that we could use this at 2000 volts because of the current limitation. Okay, so you know, a little nuanced uh, approach to that, and we'll call that the end of uh, this video.